there are two types, two main types of trig equations that have a sine function and a cos function in them. I'm going to start with the one that makes a tan. And what you've got to remember is that if you're going to make a tan, you'll see that in a moment, the sine function and the cos function have to be of the same angle. Okay, now this is not saying that every time you see a sine and a cos in the same question, you're going to make a tan. There's another type that's a main type, and you could also find them in factorizing questions. This is an example of one where you are going to make a tan, and I'll explain why. Okay, so check number one, there's a cos and a sine in the same question. It is an equation because there's the equals. And then what's going to happen is you're going to recognize there's really like nothing you can do here. And what we want to do is check that the angles are the same, right? So that's a two theta and that's a two theta. They could be anything, absolutely anything, as long as they're exactly the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the cos is on the one side and the sine is on the other. That'll be easy by taking that one over. So I'm going to say cos 2 theta equals, that'll become positive, sine 2 theta. Okay, now we are going to make a tan by dividing both sides by the cos theta. Okay, so I'm just going to make a note here. We divide both sides not by cos. Okay, you can't do that. Cos is always attached to its angle. So if you're going to divide, you have to divide by cos of 2 theta. Look what happens when I do that. What does that become? 1, right? And this one? Well, it's sine of an angle over cos of the same angle. So that makes your tan. So what I've got now is 1 equals tan of 2 theta. Once you've gotten past this initial bit, it's really easy from here because this is just a normal trick equation. We will go to general solution, and then if there's specific requirements given, which I'll deal with later, then we will go to specific um, answers. What I've got now is I've got 1 equals tan 2 theta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift the tan, and get an answer for 2 theta. What I get then, if I shift the 1, is I get 45 degrees. What I haven't done yet is my quads, so I need to go back here. Tan is a positive number. If you want to swap these and put the tan on the left and the 1 on the right, you can do that. They'll swap exactly the way they are without changing signs. Um, so here, tan is positive, which means it's in quad 1 and 3. So at this point, I know that 2 theta, the angle in question, that equals 45 degrees. And remember that at that point, I need to stop, call that my reference angle, split into quads, and solve from there. Okay, so quad 1 is the reference angle. So in quad 1, I'm just going to have 2 theta equals 45 degrees. This is a tan equation. It's become one. So it's going to be plus K180, and I'm going to say K is an element of integers, and then I can solve from there. So theta is going to be 22,5 degrees plus K90, and that's the end of the general solution. And then my other one is quad 3. In quad 3, Quad 3 is the 180 plus quad, so I'm going to say 2 theta equals 180 plus the 45 plus K180. Now remember that you don't actually have to do this one, and I'm going to show you why when we go to specific solutions. I'm doing it now because it's not wrong to do it, it's just unnecessary. If you want to always do the same steps, do what I'm doing now but I'll show you in a few minutes how you don't have to. Okay, so then I'm going to have 2 theta is 225 degrees plus K180, and then dividing through by 2, I end up with 112,5 plus K90. Okay, so those would be my answers if I was asked for the general solution. What I'm going to take you through now is if you were given 
for example, a restriction. Okay, so these are my two general solutions. Pick up your calculator, take the 22.5, and let's let k equal 1. Just add on 90 to that, and what do you get out? It's the 112,5, isn't it? And if you let k equal negative 1, so effectively taking that and subtracting 90, you're going to get the 22,5. So you only have to do this answer for tan because that part of the general solution accounts for this one. Okay, but let's pretend that this was not a general solution question. Let's pretend that in this one, you are given restrictions. Okay, so let's add on a restriction. Now, this wasn't in the beginning of the question, but I'm putting it in now. So let's say we said it goes from negative 90 degrees. I really don't like writing degree signs. Oh, well, to positive 90. All right, let's see. So in this one, in quad one, if k equals zero, I'm going to have theta as 22.5 degrees. If k equals one, then I'm adding 90. That got me there, remember. So I now have 112,5. Let's have a look there. Does that fit into this boundary? Okay, so k can be zero and I can have that answer. If k is one, I have this, which is bigger than 90, so that one's not gonna work. What about negative one? So we're going to take the, the 22,5 and we are going to minus, effectively minus, 90 degrees. That gives me negative 67,5 degrees. Does that fit in? It does, so that works. Now let's think it through. With k is 0, that, wo that works. With k is 1, it doesn't work. So if k is 2, and I'm adding on more, it's obviously not going to work. So I'm not even going to try k is 2. But I might want to try k as negative 2. Okay, so that's effectively 22,5 minus 180, which will give me negative 157,5. Too big. Okay, so I know if I go further negative or further positive, it's not going to work, and I only have two solutions from quad one. Now, look what happens in quad three. So let's go again. We've got k is zero. If k is 0, then theta, uh, theta will just be the 1, 1, 2. Look, we've already got it. Okay, so you're going to see a whole lot of redundant steps being taken here. Only when it's a tan, though. All right. If k is 1, we're going to add on the 90, but that's already too big, so let's not do that. What about k being negative 1? We did that a moment ago. If k is negative 1, I'm minusing the 90, and then I get to the 22,5. That does work, but I already had it, right? So now you can see I'm just repeating information. What about k being negative 2? So if k is negative 2, that means I'm going to take the 112 plus negative 2 times 90. I'm doing the same step as I was doing earlier. I'm just talking about it in a different way. That gets me to the negative 67,5. But wait, I already had that. Okay, should I do the negative 3? You can try that. You can go back to your calculator and just change the negative 2 to negative 3. And that gets me to negative 157,5, which is too big. Okay, so what I've got here and what I was trying to prove is that you can do both quads when it's tan, but you end up with the same answers. Okay, so in the general solution, this one accounts for that one. That one's already embedded in that answer. And if it happened to be one where they want specific solutions, you end up popping out the same answers. Okay, my final answer in this one, Let's go in order according to the number line. We're going to have negative 67,5 degrees and also the 22,5. What brackets am I using? Curly ones. 
because that shows that I'm listing and I'm not going from one boundary to the next.